Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a stem and leaf chart. As you can see in Wikipedia, they also call it a stem and leaf display, or it's also called a stem plot. Right? And it's basically a way to represent quantitative data. We're looking at data that is in numbers and looking at it in a graphical format. We're not really creating a chart, but in a way using the numbers to formulate or kind of represent a chart. So what does that mean? Let's say a real world example here is this um, bus schedule in Japan. So in the structure of a stem and leaf chart, the stem is basically one number. So in this essence, it's the times from 5 a.m. to 12 a.m. midnight, which is 23 or 0. And the leaf are the numbers that are after that, maybe in the tens place or the hundreds place. In this in this example, we have our hours. This is five o'clock, and it's five ten, five seventeen, five twenty nine. And visually, you can see that the this is kind of like a sideways uh, column chart or a sideways histogram, and it kind of shows you that the most um, the visually kind of shows you that the the more busiest hour is probably the seven o'clock hour and maybe this four o'clock hour right and it shows you here this also kind of gives you a nice little um, representation if you kind of put this if you kind of flip this over to its side and make it horizontal instead of this uh, vertical or, or make it vertical instead of horizontal and you kind of flip it over to the left a little bit you notice that it's, it will be a nice little column chart but in essence it's a bar chart here so this is a stem and leaf display we can create this type of chart in Excel, and I'm going to show you two ways that we do that. So let's get into the data. So here we are. I've randomized some test scores here. I've got a ran between function. So this basically does a random number between 20 and 89. And if I press the F9 key a couple of times, you'll notice that it changes. And I've already got an example of a stem and leaf chart here. And you'll notice that if I press the F9 key, it changes a little bit. And you'll see that uh, it gives you kind of a nice visual representation with the numbers, which is uh, occurring most. And the, the one that's occurring most is, is is in the tens categories of the sevens, right? So we have our 70, which is over here, right? The zero represents the, the ones digit. We have a 71, which is somewhere down here, right? And so let's see how we create something like this. Let's delete this first. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on to static data. Let's make this another, let's remove this, select that, right click and delete. So I'll delete everything there and it changes the uh, values here because the, the ran between function is a volatile function. I'm going to just make that a static function for now. Press control C to copy and then I'm just going to paste values, right? Select that and place values so it doesn't change on me uh, later on, right? So you notice that. So in creating this, I want to understand uh, my tens places, which is the minimum and which is the maximum. I should probably put minimum first and then max later, right? So I can use the min max function to do that. Type equal max, press tab to open it up, select my values here. And since I'm going to copy it down here, I'm going to press the F4 key to lock those ranges in place. The dollar sign shows up for each of them. Close parentheses, press enter. Now you notice my minimum value is 81. Oops, I used the wrong function. Let's, let me type min, press tab, and press enter. So the minimum value is 21, right? I can take the fill handle here and drag it down here, and it's going to copy that formula down, and it copied the min formula, but I'm going to change that to max, right? Press enter. So my values are between 20 and 80, of course. So what this does is I can type in stem here and my values are going to start at 2 and go on to 87. So I'm going to take that, press the control key, and you can see that my cursor turns into a little plus here. I, I kind of hover over the fill handle here and drag it down. You can see as I, as I drag it down, it increments it, right? So I'm going to increment it up to where it says 8, and I have my stems here. So to get my leaf values, it's going to be quite a formula. And the formula that I'm going to use to count it, let's make it easy first. Let me see. I have a 21 here. Let's change that 21 to a 20 so I can better show you this example with the 0. Type 20, and my minimum value turns into 20 here. So in terms of the leaf, let me type leaf. 
in this particular instance, I'm going to have to type a formula to count that. So the formula is going to be equals, I'm going to use a function called repeat, R-E-P-T, and I want to pr press tab to so open up parentheses. I want to start off with zero. So I'm going to type a series of repeat functions or combination of repeat functions that go from zero, then one, then two, then three, four, five, all the way down to, all the way up to eight, right? And if I want to repeat text, and this is a number, I have to put the zero to represent as text in quotes. So that even though it's a it's asking for text, if I put in a number, it's going to see it as a value. So I need to put that value, that number, in quotes to make it look like it's text, right? So I want to pre repeat that a couple times. We can see this only shows up once, but in other instances, other numbers may show up more than once. Um, if I had 20 here twice, then I want to have that zero show up twice, right? But it only shows up once here. But I want to repeat that function. So I want to count how many times a zero shows up. So I'll do this function called count if and press tab to open up the parentheses. My range of it is going to be this range. So I'll select from A2 to A21. I'm going to copy this formula, so I want to lock those ranges in. I'm going to press the F4 key, so it puts dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers, so it locks the range in. When I copy it over, it'll keep that range, right? And what's the criteria that I'm going to use? Well, the criteria I'm going to use is I want to make sure this is in the tens, the tens area of 2, 20, basically. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to select that, and I'm going to multiply that by 10, right? And in order to also copy it down, I also want to make sure that I stay within column E. Let me move this tip here over here. I want to make sure I move and stay in column E. I can press F4 to toggle the dollar signs around, press it again and again so the dollar sign shows up in front of the E. And so when I copy it down, it uh, it stays with an E, but it, that, that's that E7, it goes to E8, E9, E, E10, etc. Right? So I want to make that. I want to count where it says, okay, uh, I want to count 20, but I want to I want to plus zero, right? So 20 plus zero is zero, right? But you'll see why I, I add the zero there. When I do the repeat function for one, I'm going to change that to one. So I'm going to type uh, close parentheses, and this actually doesn't close the close the the function. Well, let me let me do this. Let me let me do it for one, all right? So I'm going to close parentheses. And what this function does is it will repeat repeat zero for anything that anytime it sees twenty, right? So press enter. Whoops, it's asking me to correct it. I need another parenthesis. It's smart enough to figure that out. I'll click yes, and then it sees that twenty. So it sees that twenty right there, right? So if I change this to twenty, it's going to put another zero there, right? Because there's, there's two twenties. So now it see that. So if I change this to 21, it's not going to see that yet because I don't have the function to count to repeat the number 1. To do that, I need to put in another function, or I need to kind of repeat this function. So to repeat that function, I have to put an ampersand, I have to join it. And I just need to copy this, Control c to copy, Control v to paste, and change that for, to 1, and change this to a one, right? So basically it's going to pre repeat the number one and it's going to count if, and look in this range, to see if anything matches um, this value, 20 times 10, to, um, 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 1, which is 21. How many 21s occur here? And it's going to only find one, right? And when, it's, when it finds one, it's going to repeat that number one. Press enter, and now you notice that it's also done that. A good thing to do here is get a little space between the 0 and 1. So I'm going to put a space here and put a space here, right? And so now you're going to have that spacing. So basically what we're going to do is we have to repeat this particular command, this and everything, and put the number 2 in place of this number 1 and that there. Now. An easy way to do this is to, instead of like just control paste and just typing it all, what I can do is I can take this particular uh, text, control C to copy, press escape, and I'll go into some random cell here and just paste that, right? 
and it's just all a bunch of text, right? So after I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this number one and put in some kind of random character that doesn't really, that's kind of unique. And one of the unique characters is probably an ampersand. Because when I do the find and replace, if I find and replace a one, if I find a one and replace it with something else, it might change that one there. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to also change this to ampersand. Press enter. And now I'm going to copy it down a couple times, probably uh, eight places. So... I've already got the one here, and all I need to do is change that add to a two. So I'll just press Control F to bring up the find and replace. Select my replace here, and it, I'm going to look for that particular symbol and replace it with the number two. Select replace, so you see that it's changed that now. And for this one, I'm going to do change change that to three, and click replace. And you see that it's changed that. I only need to change those places, and just do the same for here. Four. Oops. 4, replace, 5, click replace, 6, click replace, 7, click replace, and then 8, click replace. All right, close. I didn't need this. I'll just delete, delete that. And I'm, I need to take this bunch of text. These are all in different cells here, so you can, it's not an easy way to copy and paste. But I can just do a control C to copy that. And insert a text box. So I go to insert, select the text box, bring it over here, and then paste it in the text box. So now it's all one one uh, one thing to copy, one object to copy, or one bunch of text to copy. So I'll select all that, control C to copy, go back in here. So now I can select all of this, control C to copy, go into this cell, click my drop down here, click on my cell here that I can paste it and just paste let's see and it pasted it in it well okay so I'll press enter and now it's pasted it in you can see the other numbers sh show up let's uh, minimize this so how many 20 show up so we have 20 we have 20 here we have 20 here we also have 25 and 25 shows up over here and we have 27 which shows up over here, right? And so all I need to do now is just click the drag this and it's going to copy the formulas all down. And now I have my leaf chart. I can just remove all these now. I don't really, oops, control Z to undo that. I can just select the, these bunch of columns and delete that right click, delete. And maybe that, that text box also got deleted. So basically I've got my stem and leaf chart. And if I wanted to make it look nice, I can put the underline, the underline here, and here I'll put a border on the right side. Let's put a border here on the right side. So we've got my stem and leaf chart. So basically, it's giving you a, a bar chart of which which values in the tens place show up more. Now, if I go ahead and change my settings here, my I do a rand between, press tab, let's say 20 and 89 close that press control enter to execute this command on the whole range of cells here control enter now you notice that every time I press the F9 key we can see a nice uh, distribution of my stem and leaf values here see so values here in the 20s you can see it shows up quite a few times we had a couple couple 20s here right oh we have a 29 here but it doesn't show up here and I think I know why is because we have, we uh, in this particular instance, we did 20. To, oh, you know what? We need an additional repeating function. I forgot to add the one for nine. So I'm going to select that. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And instead of eight, we'll do nine here, right? Do nine, press enter. And let's minimize that. And now anywhere there's a nine, six, nine. Whoops, let's let's double click. Let's drag this so it copies it all the way down. And press the F9 key a couple of times. Let's see. Now we have our nine setting, right? So there's 59 here and it picks up the 59. So I just missed that nine, that nine digit there. So there's the way that you can create a stem and leaf. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.